this is a joint paper with um, Rajiv and Shaheen. Uh, it is on in impact of non uh, income and non income shocks uh, on child labor. Um, the motivation for this study is that in countries like Tanzania, where poverty is high, um, say for example, uh, one third is below the national poverty line, and two thirds of the population is below the $1.25 uh, poverty line. So poverty is a big issue. Uh, at the same time, these people also uh, face shocks. And unfortunately, their coping mechanism are very limited due to various factors. In fact, the literature point to several uh, of such factors. Poverty itself is, a, is an issue. Um, there are other issues like imperfect credit markets, uh, imperfect uh, land and labor markets, access to assets. All these uh, uh, decide uh, what kind of coping mechanism or at what level uh, they use. Um, so the basic objective of this paper is to examine the relationship between household income and on income shocks uh, and child labor, and to see if the availability of other coping mechanisms or strategies such as social protection mechanisms, access to credit, uh, and asset holdings reduce child labor. Uh, we rely on the literature and try to see uh, whether consumption is smoothing and the uh, availability of other coping uh, uh, arrangements uh, ha can explain uh, this relationship. So the economy we are talking about um, uh, uh, is an economy where the parents make all the decisions, including that of the child, uh, sending him to school or, sending, uh, or enabling him to uh, uh, join the labor market. Um, in this particular model, there is one parent, one child, and the parent decides uh, on, uh, on the child's uh, uh, human capital development, sent him to school, uh, or uh, uh, asking him to uh, work. So household derives utility, um, usual uh, consumption uh, assess type utility function, Plus, we modify a little bit to uh, incorporate uh, a human capital uh, portion of it, uh, taking uh, the literature on the human capital aspects. Um, parent participate in the labor market and derive income F. So basically, they supply labor. Um, but also, it depends on the shocks, uh, as well as uh, household characteristics Ristics, like, say, for example, level of education of the parent. So the household problem is to maximize the, this utility function subject to its budget constraint. Uh, now here, the child also generates certain level of income. Uh, the time allocated uh, is uh, one minus whatever the time spent on education uh, in the labor market. Um, and the solution uh, for this maximization problem is given uh, in five, where the child labor is dependent on the parents' income, the uh, shocks, the characteristics of the household, um, and also uh, level of uh, time spent on the education, uh, and also the uh, random variable. Now, <clears throat> the second aspect we want to look at is how the household behaves if the uh, household um, has access to assets. So the budget constraint is slightly uh, different, where now uh, the uh, household has uh, financial assets uh, from which uh, he derives certain level of income. So the first order condition also uh, changed a little bit uh, to reflect that as uh, in seven. The, the third uh, um, the model we want to look at is now the household has both access to 
asset as well as access to credit. Uh, again, the uh, budget constraint will reflect the previous uh, uh, variable as well as the, the last two uh, components where uh, now uh, out of the income, a uh, certain portion is paid at interest on the borrowings he has made in the period. Uh, the solution is given uh, in model nine. So basically what we are trying to do is to use um, Tanzanian data to um, estimate models reflected uh, in five, seven, and nine. The data we are trying to use is uh, latest rounds of uh, Tanzania National Panel Survey, uh, which was initially conducted in 2009, and the second round uh, was in 2011. Um, in, this two, in these two rounds, uh, we noticed that the attrition is very low uh, because um, the over 90% of the round one uh, households uh, were re-interviewed to make sure that they are in the system in the second round. Uh, we have a fairly large uh, uh, number of households, but for the particular estimation, we use um, roughly about 4,000 children, uh, meaning uh, roughly about uh, 700 households. Uh, our outcome measures are children's round two work patterns, whether they work in the labor market as child labor, and then uh, their pattern of human capital development and a measure of uh, food security, taking into account the questions raised. Uh, uh, we restrict, um, if you look at the human capital component, we are restricting it to ages between 7 and 15, uh, because they are the ones who go to the school, and we are focusing on them. Um, so, on the controls and buffering mechanisms, uh, at the child level, uh, we limit controls to age and gender, girls and boys. At the household level, uh, we use parental education and household size. Uh, as for buffer mechanisms, uh, we use access to credit. Uh, we use as, uh, the, uh, whether the household has a bank account as a proxy, and also durable goods uh, as a proxy for collateral uh, uh, assets, which enable them to borrow from banks. The primary measure of household income shock is crop shocks. It can be due to many uh, reasons, drought, flooding, pest issues, and all of that. Uh, the data provides, uh, uh, because there are particular questions asked whether they have lost uh, their crops during the particular uh, period. And also, um, another shock, uh, non-income shock, um, we use the, uh, whether there was a death in the immediate family, especially uh, 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 within the household, uh, and whether it had uh, an impact on child labor related outcomes. So the, um, in terms of empirical strategy, we are interested in investigating the relation between child labor intensity and measures of parental income, crop shocks, and credit constraints. Uh, we have a couple of challenges. Uh, potential simultaneity of child labor and parental income. And the second one is omitted variable bias with respect to crop shocks and child labor. So to address these two, uh, challenges, we use, um, we adapt a fourfold strategy uh, to address some of these concerns. We use parents' level of education as a proxy for parental income uh, to avoid potential simultaneity issues, include a broad range of control variables, including household control such as the size of household and the size of the household. Uh, accessibility to land holdings. Uh, we investigate whether household agricultural shocks are correlated with household child or parental characteristics and also use uh, um, regional uh, fixed effects. Uh, we use also uh, household fixed 
effects uh, as a robustness check. Now, on the question of whether the shocks are exogenous with respect to child uh, uh, labor and uh, labor, and whether they are transitory, um, we we use a linear probability model uh, to regress crop shocks against our individual, parental, and household control variables. Um, but the results in general lend credence to uh, causal interpretation of the effects of crop shocks in round one on um, uh, subsequent, uh, subsequent outcomes. Uh, but in one particular case, especially whether it is a transitory or permanent one, uh, we see the round one uh, shocks uh, somewhat related to uh, shocks in round two as well. Uh, but we see the magnitude is very small, so um, uh, we, uh, we assume that it is not uh, a serious problem. I'm not going to show you all the results because of the limitation of time, but a uh, particular variable that I am interested in shown in each of the estimation. Now, first one, uh, the outcome is total child labor hours. The variable I'm interested in crop shock in round one and see how the child behaves in round two. Uh, you will see in, the, uh, in all these estimates we use panel OLS estimation. Uh, we will see that in the full sample, it is uh, highly significant. 7.6 uh, hours uh, increase in child labor in round two, uh, but it is mainly coming from uh, male or boys. Um, now, the first one, full, the full sample, in fact, the 7.6 is roughly 12% increase of child labor uh, with respect to the uh, mean, sample mean, and also uh, it is about 15% uh, with respect to the boys. So it's quite significant. In the second one, uh, outcome is child agricultural labor hours. See again, we see that uh, crop shocks increase child labor in the full sample the, uh, as well as uh, in the uh, male sample as well, again, uh, quite similar to the previous one. Uh, here also, the percentage uh, impact is very high, uh, especially in the agriculture sector. It is, uh, uh, especially in the boys' one, it is about 42% uh, with respect to the sample average. Um, child wage labor hours, uh, again, uh, we will see it is not only in the full sample, but also both boys and girls, the impact is somewhat significant. Um, but the mag uh, magnitude uh, is not uh, as high as in the other two areas. Less, less. It... No, the, the, in this particular case, what it means is that when there is uh, crop shocks, they are moving from wage labor to agriculture, looking at the previous one and the other two. And the other one we use is uh, household labor hours. Uh, again, here, um, it's quite uh, uh, significant, um, especially uh, with respect to male. Uh, Uh, male uh, and also now if you look at the the next one uh, when you use the uh, outcome of whether the, the child has left the school because of a shock you will see that the main effect is significant uh, 3.9 percent increase in leave people leaving out but it's mainly coming from girls uh, 5.6 and 5 to 6 percent uh, increase in uh, uh, increase in um, uh, but 
if you take the sample average, it's quite high. In fact, it is about 35% uh, increase in terms of percentage uh, leaving out of school. So the basic message coming out of these uh, set of um, investigations is that Households are, households are not fully able to cope with the agricultural shocks they face by adjusting children's level of labor hours, uh, meaning that despite working additional hours, children's food security continues to be an issue. Because the last one in particular uh, is about a question of whether uh, the household had food security issue. You will see that uh, both boys and girls uh, suffer from hunger, despite working in the, uh, working as, uh, the, uh, in the labor market as children. Um, so overall results suggest that crop shocks lead not only to an increase in child labor hours, but to a change in the composition of child uh, time use. Children are spending less time engaged in wage work, but more time in agricultural work. And girls are less likely to, to be in school. Uh, we also consider buffering effects, as I said, in the model 7 and 9. So the first one you use is uh, the bank account, access to credit. Uh, you will see that access to credit significantly reduces the child labor hours. A similar outcome uh, is uh, reflect, uh, but, but it's a completely different uh, uh, outcome uh, in the household hours. Um, well, of course, this could be due to the fact that um, the proxy variable we are using may have some limitation. The, on the food security one also, you will see a reduction in uh, uh, food security issues or hunger if people have access to uh, credit. The, another one, as I mentioned, is the assets. Uh, we get very similar results as in the access to credit, where when people have assets, uh, they, can, uh, uh, they can mitigate some of the effects. So leaving school is very much similar uh, when uh, people have assets. Uh, negative impact on the adverse effects of schooling. Um, Similar result on food security as well. So two points, significant buffering effects that go in the direction we expected. Access to bank account seems to buffer children against hunger when household experience agricultural shocks. Um, so I will leave these and go to policy implications. Four points uh, we uh, come across is significant effect of income shocks on child labor and the resulting impact on future human capital development. Possible mitigating measures as indicated by some buffering effects, especially when we have access to uh, assets and credit. Possibilities of using household characteristics such as parental education, which is not shown, but have some positive impact on reducing child labor. Uh, possible adverse gender biases of some coping strategies. Girls suffering heavily in the face of household income shocks. So these are some of the issues that probably we have to address in terms of policy. Thank you. Good. Thank you very much.